go. Okay. Okay. Welcome to the Finance Committee for the Town of Southampton on Monday, September 27th. It is 7.12 a.m. and... GM. Oh, p.m. Sorry. <laughs> I know, huh? Just to check to see if we're awake. I know, huh? <laughs> um, and we'll call the meeting to order. Public comments, no communications, I don't have any. Um, I started to type up the minutes, but I didn't finish the one from the July meeting. Um, but I, because I want to send them to you first, so I'll send those to you guys. They're pretty, there's not a whole lot in there. Yeah, I mean, I think I had that. I still have that notes that I took that other meeting. The other too, meeting, yeah. I'll try and do that this week. Um, do you guys mind if we go out of order and take the police chief's PRF first before yeah. we get an update from the select board liaison? Sure. That's fine. Okay. Chief, you're up. All right. Um, I, I hope you have copies of that. You have a copy of that. Um, I do. Robin left this um, in the email, the mailbox downstairs. Okay. And so what I, I have here, just for you to review, is this was printed out today. The top portion, as you see, is a, uh, that's our current accounting system. Because this is for a position that was, has been vacant. John, did you want to copy this? Um, this is for a position that has been vacant. And I just want to show you that the budget currently supports it. And right now we're having a hard time with overtime expenditures mm -hmm. significantly. We've had a lot of unexpected expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, Family Medical Leave Act, um, disability, um, military, COVID, a lot. Um, but what I wanted to demonstrate here was we're about a quarter in now. Mm -hmm. And the actual police wages expended, I have that listed there. Mm -hmm. The difference is 21722 That's what I have above what I should be at, meaning that's that's where the support is for that full-time police officer is the funding for it. Mm -hmm. you, you know, multiply that times four, it's, you know, 80000 My overtime expenditures are, <clears throat> I'm right now, $7,971 over what I should be at the quarter. Mm -hmm. So so if you had another full-time person, you wouldn't be spending as much in overtime. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Have you, um, and I don't know whether it's really not up to you, but I guess I can ask John this question. You can get reimbursed for COVID leave, although it was only through September 30th. That's the thing. The, uh, I, I submitted the, for those. You that, did, I from Charlie Baker line. through the Mass Tax website. Uh, I actually just did the line account. From a while ago, that's what I was told to. Oh, okay. You know, I use that, so the reimbursement, I think, would be on the other end, probably on our accounts. Oh, so that's different than what I... Yeah, okay. So basically, Baker enacted where if people are taking COVID leave, you can submit reimbursements through... Um, when people, when the treasurer, our treasurer at least, submits their tax bill, um, sales tax through the mass tax website, mm -hmm. there's Is a place... Calling tax? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's a place that you can do the, um, you can um, submit for COVID reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So like okay. in Westfield, we got reimbursed for people that worked at g and &E, people that worked um, in the police department. She was out for, or he was out, I forget who it was, for, you know, was a week it, or two. Did it include also replacement costs or no? Uh, it was just the leave of just what you would pay okay. them for COVID, right. yeah. But you would get that reimbursed, yeah. so. Okay. See, um, I haven't done anything like that in South Hadley either like I yeah so I don't file the withholding tax but I because we have a payroll service uh, but I do do you do sales tax, tax? because I do sales yeah tax. it's really when the sale when you it's the sales tax module in the state why it's that way I'm not quite sure so I should ask Jen I guess about that because she would be the one She's mm -hmm. yeah the maybe one I'll send her an access. email tomorrow right. okay great but, but um, I don't know What's September that? 30th is pretty close I, I, I guess I don't know whether this is whether you have had to have got reimbursed by the 30th or submitted it by the 30th. So I think it's if you submit by the 30th. Submit by the 30th. Yeah, and they actually send you a paper check, which is kind of stinky, but. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I just am throwing that out there. So, uh, is that something that I, you know, Jen would do, or is that something she that Jen would do? Jen would so give her all the background. Yep. It yep. really yep. wouldn't affect your bottom line. It would just help to reimburse mm -hmm. the wage. Like your wage line out. if you were paying right. people right. out of COVID for here, but if you're doing something else. It wasn't. Then. It was from a former line item through the, um, the CARES Act. The CARES Act. Uh, gotcha. Uh, yeah. Okay. That works too. Okay. So you, so this all makes sense to me. 
Um, and again, that's why we split out the overtime wages a long time ago, so you could see if you needed mm -hmm. a new police officer. Yeah. Um, and this again, this is that this is a position that's not a new position. This right. is yeah. this is not just has been vacant. Lied vacant because of well the, the pandemic mm -hmm. and some some other unfortunate or things we didn't consider. We mm -hmm. someone just didn't make the academy yeah. um, requirements. Mm -hmm. And Academy is coming up in October? It is. It is. Unfortunately, right now, I don't have enough in expenses to put somebody through the Academy, so this particular um, request is going to be for a, hopefully a lateral transfer. That's what we're seeking. So okay. someone from another town that's yes. already been to the Academy yes. or something that wants to That's move. what we're hoping for. Somebody that's been in the Academy and just, uh, you know, they put them maybe self-sponsored and they, they don't have a job yet. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That's what we're hoping for. Has okay. anyone applied? We haven't submitted it yet. We oh. know, as pr provided that it gets approved here and then approved for the select board meeting, then we can we can actually post it. Yeah. So this PRF, um, if you guys want to take a look, is pay scale is twenty four oh two an hour, thirty eight point six seven hours per week. Yeah, I already saw it. <coughs> I already saw it. Oh yeah, because you were there. <laughs> Um, yep. And that's just a little background. That, that letter is a little background on, you know, some of the hardships that we're finding. Um, as you know, part-time police officers oh, that do not become certified full-time police officers ultimately. So, Don, do you know anything about what, what the Reform Act and how that might be affecting, how it is affecting some local police departments? Mm -hmm. not so, really. we heavily relied on part-time officers as a, to augment our force. You know, um, we didn't, we couldn't sometimes whether it was vacation, some open shifts. Right. But as time goes on, what happened is of July first, we cannot hire any more part-time officers unless they were full-time academy trained. Because of the whole... Because of the Equi Equity Act and um, the reform. And so what had happened was um, every part-time officer has to become certified police officer, and they get certified through a bridge academy, which is bridging them to the next certification level. That is um, about three weeks of in-person training and uh, about 100 hours of online training. Wow. On top of that, they have to meet a medical as well as a, a physical uh, fitness standards or physical agi agility test. Currently, so from this point forward, they either have to, and, and the first group is A through H, then the second group, they split the alphabet by the last name up in, in thirds. And so by within three years, everyone in the first year, those A through H, have to go to that bridge academy. Otherwise, if they do not, for whatever reason it may be, they get disqualified. Currently, we have eight part-time police officers on our roster. Um, our most active one will be getting deployed for nine months in the, in the winter, late winter. That's already expected to happen. I just received a resignation from another office, part-time officer today. Actually, she submitted it on the 24th. Um, she just cannot meet the three weeks of the Bridge Academy, but she'd have to take vacation time for it. I have an officer that's on a, two officers that are now on personal leave. Um, one, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they both come back, but with the expectations of meeting this, these, uh, the Academy standards, the Bridge Academy standards, and the substance of their the, the cause for their leave I think I'm gonna lose that so I'm likely gonna have to we're gonna have to start recruiting mm -hmm. full-time police officers that want to work on a part-time level which is gonna be kind of rare mm -hmm. you know so we're, we're finding ourselves so then who has to foot the bill to put them through the full-time Academy if no I'm saying they're already trained full-time police officers so for instance um, oh, um. you know uh, let's say so somebody in another town that another works full time town. that wants to pick up more part time shifts. Yes, which you know that's you're not going to find a lot of that. No, because they're going to they're going to take the detail work mm -hmm. over just a regular. Right. Or they're overtime in their own department. Right. Or, right. or you know, and maybe they just want to change a pace. You know, we have kind of put our feelers out. We might have one or two interested in, but again, then you have to weigh: is there one to two shifts a month going to um, be cost beneficial? Mm -hmm. Because you know, they, they do have entitlements in the uh, contract, such as clothing allowance, such as, uh, and you know, we're, we're at that, what, and then training them um, just to be, uh, you know, meet our, our department's um, standards. Mm. 
whether it's be firearms training or whatever it may be. So there's you know, have to weigh that cost analysis. So, yeah, it's it's been it's going to be difficult for police departments all around. You know. Mm -hmm. And then when you hire more full time, you got all the benefits. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so you know that's why this position is, is this position in particular is just so crucial right now. Yeah. And it's been um, vacant for a year? It's been vacant. So what had happened was we had somebody set up to go. That person um, no longer became eligible to meet the academy. The academy is 22 weeks. So then there was a 22-week period of, of nobody going. We hired somebody else. So yes, it's been a while. But what happened was be between the pandemic and this person not meeting the academy standards set us way back. And we can't, we didn't want to, we never want to put two officers in the academy at the same time because what we do is we get a waiver for one so they don't have to go to the academy right away so we actually have personnel working. Then we only have one person going to the academy. So that's, that's essentially what happened. So fully staffed, we were 10 officers, myself inclusive. Currently we've been nine. And now with our, our part-time force dwindling and through attrition, Perhaps mm. we might not have many at all, if not any, at some mm -hmm. point. Within three years, it might not be any, depending on if they're able to, to meet the, um, the standards of the Bridge Academy or want to meet those standards. So we're just, we're not in a, in a, in a, in a position. Mm. So I want to try to get fully staffed so I can reduce the amount of overtime. This is covering just benefits even, you know, and, and open shifts because we've been, we haven't been able to, uh, and at this rate, clearly, like over time, the budget cannot sustain this rate mm -hmm. if we're already eight thousand dollars over mm -hmm. last year at this point. Um, so thank you, it's always a pleasure. It is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, I guess I can't make that. Much. I make a motion that we accept the P PRF. Motion. Five seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'm try to get Mike Goyet back on shift. <laughs> yeah. Not doing anything. You know, I, he was directing traffic. He was directing tonight. traffic, but that's kind of what you know. He 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 left on the conditions that he could only he'd only work details. That's what he wanted to do. But maybe I can convince him to start working the shifts here and there. I have no more burning trees in my yard that he can come find. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to be careful a little bit with that, with the hours. Yeah. You know, because he's collecting retirement. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah, exactly. kind of so, things, but right. yeah. Right. But, oh. Yeah, but he definitely could yeah. work. I think it's 18 hours a week it comes out to. Yeah. Or just nine, 960 yes. hours a year. Yeah. So if it was more... As long as it averages out right, to no right. more than yeah. that in, yeah, a, in sure a year. Yeah, I'm sure aware of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But we wouldn't have to train him really. Yeah. Much. He's, he's but he'd have to keep up the standard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any questions? Anything all set? No, well, I'm all, all right. set. Did you bring us a bottle of wine or anything like that? Uh, well, I, I, I think, you know, I might get myself in trouble for yeah, that. Right. So. You got me under 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Move me up too. Appreciate oh, yeah, yeah, we got such a crowd here. <laughs> yeah. All right, take care. Thank you. You're welcome. So, I'm going to give this to you, Joan, to bring to the meeting tomorrow, or do you want me to put it in the box? No, I can take it. Okay, because it's, uh, here's all the, all his, I knew he would have a letter and everything else. He's done so good. Um, I'll give you this too. You guys can have all this. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, so I guess since we went out of order, we'll hear from our select board liaison. So which we'll probably cover some of these topics that are in here about the accountant, the auditor, I mean, yeah, the so audit and the accountant and all that kind of stuff. So I think the only update I have that isn't already somewhere in here is that um, at some point, probably tomorrow night's meeting, the select board's going to vote on a finalization of this new committee that is going to be charged with the finance overhaul. 
of the town, finding new revenue sources, and just like a think tank, really. Mm -hmm. But the makeup of it requires one member of the finance committee to be appointed to it. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how often, you guys are probably more busy than I am, but I don't know that much, so. But how often do they meet? It's going to be at least once a month. It's going to be, there's going to be 13 members, 12 members or 13 members on it, two from the select board. I believe one of them needs to be the chair of the select board who will chair the committee. The town administrator, one from finance, and one from um, the makeup of the treasurer, collector, town clerk, and I think building commissioner, one of them. So they tried to do it so they could break things in the groups and they each bring in and then three citizens from town that have some sort of knowledge or background that isn't already represented by the people at the table. So what's the charge or what's the premise of this particular committee? A help solve the financial crisis of the town, identify potential new revenue streams, um, not necessarily to look at cutting expenses, but are there other ways, other things that we can do better, I guess. So Chris is the author of the committee, mm -hmm. and she created that based on the select board identifying one single goal for this year's term. And what was that goal? To get a budget on time, and prepare the budget, and straighten out the finances of the town, which is very broad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, what does what, that mean? What avenue you want to go down. Yeah. So. I don't mind, but Barbara, if you are willing, it's... Oh, no, we are more knowledgeable. If you, if, you, if, you have the, if you have the time, I absolutely think you should do it. But if you don't, then I'm... I mean, the other thing I can do tonight or tomorrow morning is just email the group, the working draft of the language, so you can just see exactly what she's thinking or what she's proposed to put forward. I guess t tentatively, I can... You know, help you guys out, but um, yeah, that would be great if you could send that. That would be helpful. I don't think I can do. Um, I think you get passed one, being one, the liaison to PPPB. Well, yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> your duty, and so if I, yeah, I mean, I wish we had more people, people. here to. Uh, I did make a plea when I stood up and. Gave my little. Speech. Oh, you, I meant to watch it and then I oh, forgot. Yeah. It so. wasn't very long. I, I, I guess, it, you know, my my spiel was. Uh, I don't know if I have it in here. Um, oh yeah, here. This is what I wrote. But um, I can. Did you send it to me? I think I sent yeah. it to you. Yeah. And yours kicked back, so I have to make sure I have your right email too. Okay. And I could have typed it in wrong. Because it was hard for me to write it. That would be great. Yeah, I have your phone number, but um, basically the gist of it was how do we work together to get the finances back in order because they're a mess. And I hope that's not what that group is trying to do because they weren't messy before I left. <laughs> but I think trying to no. well, trying to find more sources of revenue, I think, is a good thing. Um, yeah, I think in there. In, in, I don't want to speak for the whole committee, but I think certain members of the committee feel that there should be like shared services. Like maybe there's other areas where we yeah. can either host or take part of yeah. and, and benefit, like HR, for example. Um, that seems to be moving forward with the um, having P PVPC do a study in Southampton, West Hampton, Goshen, Chesterfield, I think, have all signed on to do it. And is that costing any money? It's all coming out of the DLT, the Division of Local Technical Services. Okay, okay. And this will just be the study to see. Yeah, yeah. What we do, so. So. Hmm. Yeah. But the, um, that's all I have for the select board. I have more questions, but that's not necessarily just a select board member, so. <laughs> we'll wait till the meeting's over. Um, so I got a copy of um, the expense and revenue ads. I didn't ask him for it till today because uh, I was busy doing other stuff. 
Um, he sent me a copy of expenses for 21, revenue for 21, and expenses for 22. And I want to, at some point, I'm assuming it would be him, invite him or give him the list of questions that I kind of sort of jotted down as I was looking through these. Because um, it doesn't look like any of the budget transfers were done that they did for year end. Um, there is no journal entries for the assessments from the state. You know, just stuff like that. Um, you know, some of these revenue numbers don't quite look right to where they should be. So I just want to get his take on, you know, what's in this account and what was your thinking when you, you know, did it and, um, and why did you put, you know, it's just, I guess, just questions. Um, so, um, you know, why, and I guess he can't do everything, but I guess at least being able to do the budget transfers so you kind of know what the numbers are, he should have been able to, or someone should have been able to figure that out. But that's my own personal opinion. Um, the 22 expense report I looked at briefly, and I guess um, there's pieces that are missing. Um, there's no uh, budget in for charter school or school choice from the, or the RV pieces, the stuff that comes on the cherry sheet. Um, there's no water budget in here. There's no transfer station budget in here. There's no revenue pieces for transfer station or the water department. Um, yeah, so you can't tell where you You can't tell where you are. I just want the data. Sure, 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 sure. And the other, you know, like, I, just quick glance, you know, the 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 maintenance agreement for Softway and Point doesn't look like, or at least just Softway doesn't look like it's been paid. It's going to be October. I'm not quite sure where those bills disappeared. Usually Jen gets one. Maybe it went to the old account email. But it just seems odd that they're not expended yet. Yeah. You know? Um, that's just kind of, it just struck me like, well, how come there's money left in here? Um, anyway, so I'm hoping that he can, um, you know, at some point come and just, I, I don't know what the plan is. Mr. Gibson? Yeah. I don't know what the plan is to, with the new accountant, but what the select board's thought was in terms of if they're going to have this person untangle everything or they're going to have them just go forward. I, I saw a meeting, yeah. Well, I saw a meeting once where they were, you guys were discussing hiring someone to come in and finish the 21 books. That would be my preference. You know. So my preference. So I do know that Melanson his contract is done. Is up because it was a three years. The 2020. Yep. On it is done. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, they have a division. That could come in yep. and work on 21 stuff. Yeah, that's that. pretty new for them, but, but they're pretty good at that. Them from doing the 21 audit because of a conflict of interest. Yep. So but you could have Scanlon or someone else come in and do the regular audit. I guess. They could. The, the, the other question comes, and this is a rhetorical question, but do we need the audit? And so, in general, I would say yes. No the bylaws. The bylaws. Yeah. So, so the, the, you remember who? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. But if we, before we get to the bottom lot, if we had debt with the USDA, we are required to have the audit. We have no debt. No, because we refinance those two loans. Correct. Mm -hmm. If you have less than $750,000 in federal funds, you're not required to have the audit. So this no, you're not required to have a single audit. Wasn't that the, year, the annual audit? No, the single audit is separate from the annual audit. Okay. The other thing is, though, that we ran into was our rating. Yeah. So, yeah, excellent so question. Moody's, or excellent statement. Moody's. Now, I would say when I brought, I'm like, an alternative for one year would you be used uh, state house notes. And then the pushback I got was the, the dollar amount for East Seat Bridge is outside. But if you look at the past two years of the bank house notes, which is one step below the state rating, um, which I think is where Moody's has us rated right now. So we would have to pay for that rating. But they're, they've been giving out multi-million dollars to the towns in bank house notes. They used to be limited like in $50,000 increments. And then you can work up. Um, 
So you run into a bylaw issue, which could be handled with special town meeting, possibly. And my only thought on that, and this is just mine, because tomorrow night I'll share this at the committee, but it's just my thought, is that um, you reallocate those audit dollars to pay to have somebody similar and or the Lance and Heath come in and do the work to get the get that year caught up. Otherwise, we've got to find the dollars somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, if we don't have to, if we can use the state house note program for any borrowing that we have to do, then I, I'd say you don't need the Moody's. You don't money. need Moody's, mm -hmm. but if we have anything big that we need to have bonded, then we need. And it's going to be the Eastern Bridge. Yeah, that itself. I don't, I but don't when is that debt going to hit? When is that going to, I don't, I mean, it looks like they're starting to do stuff now, but. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, it's not going to be till. So my suggesting tomorrow night when, when I preference this and get, I'm not looking for the like where to do anything, but I think that's a topic. Like that scenario I just laid out should be through a joint session of the Select Board and Finance Committee together at the table at the same time to talk this all out. And, and hopefully either, yes, we can do it, or no, we can't, and here's why. Okay, let's move it off the table and try and find another solution. Mm -hmm. To your point that you made two weeks ago, we got to find times to get to the table together and just try and get everybody on the same page for the betterment of the town. I mean, it might be, if we're going to do that, it might be good to have just a conversation with, um, I don't know who took over when Clark Rowell retired from Unibank because he was our financial advisor. Um, I used David Eisenthal and South Hadley, but I don't know if that's. Yeah. But no, it's a woman. I can't remember yeah. what her name is. Brianne or Brianne? Oh, so I it might be worth just is. having a ten-minute so conversation yeah. with her and just say, you know, here's what we're kind of thinking if we go that route, like uh, foregoing the audit for a year. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you think the? Is there anything that we're not thinking of as far as negative right. impact? Uh, in doing that, and is it worth is it worth saving that money to use somewhere else for one year or not? You right. know, right? Cause and they don't do the audit, so it's not like they're gaining anything from, right. or you know, like they're just. The thing about not doing an audit and having a brand new accountant who's learning, it might be beneficial to that person to know what. The 21 audit or the 22 audit? The 21. Yeah, see, so 21 I, I would, I would is, there was no account. One, some money be spent on some on that new division coming in and doing the backlog entries, you know, cleaning up the stuff. So basically yep. kind of doing the audit, but doing it in real time. Oh, so you're having, you thought about Melanson for the 21. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that, okay. And then right. also have higher, additionally, I, I would suggest Melanson, but there may be other firms yeah. that I'm just not familiar with to say, okay, you know, how much would it cost for, for us to hire, you know, I don't want to say a mentor, but a trainer for the new person or the new people in the office that would run parallel. So the, the, the new staff doesn't necessarily have to, they can focus on 22 forward. Yeah, or. And then 21 can get cleaned up. Or does the divisional local services have someone? Right. That they can, I don't know, yeah. but do they have someone that can come out and mentor it? Well, yeah, so I, we can get they can get a mentor through the MAAA. Uh huh. Um, but I, I was, to me, a mentor is more like kind of like a, a, a coach mm. to kind of help and support morale versus no, this is the technical way to do it. And, and maybe maybe that mentor would do that. But mm. you know, it's kind of like a mini school. Yeah. You know, and as I I think I mentioned when I'm. So, um, before them, I think you definitely need to look into um, Mark Abrams. That was yeah. very, very helpful when I first started because he just goes over the basics. So, you just start building on the foundation. Yeah, I mean, that kind of gives you the basics. And I mean, luckily enough, I had Dave here for you know three, four, five times. You were here, so you kind of knew what was going on. Um, and Joyce was here. I had to teach myself a lot of stuff, but that class helped me like know where to look and say, oh, okay, this is why they do it like this and whatnot. And it was, you know, it was kind of basic. So it was, it was definitely very helpful for sure. 
And then the, the other thing I want to do, so you guys, I'm sure you've all seen the programming on it, but DLS has a, have you seen the financial forecast tool that they rolled out? Uh, I with, briefly with looked at it, but yeah, briefly. So yeah. I, I started plugging in the numbers and, and then um, I asked Lucy for the uh, viewing rates on the DLS gateway to plug in all the historical stuff. So the tool works well. We used it in Chester where you, know, you plug in your five, your five years of actual going backwards and then you set the projections forward mm -hmm. based on those trends and it kind of gives you an outlook on where you're going. So kind of build up to the five year projection outwards on where we need to be in that. Um, that's my other pitch to run the board. Whether it gets sent down to that committee that they're trying to form or somebody just starts working on it and then get buy-in from people here in town hall. So. When is the meeting tomorrow night here? Select so board? Yeah, it's down, downstairs at 7. That one should be live streamed. Yeah. I think they usually are. Um, so the accountant started today or today when is it today? Today he was sworn in today. Oh. Today was the first day of work. Do you know what's happening with the other, the assistant? Tomorrow night. So the department head for, sent the request, sent the request to the select board for consideration. It's on the agenda, but they'll be see. But, so during the PPPD <laughs> meeting, the on the assistant town accountant's position, the, there was a vote to send it back to the department head for clarification because if the committee took no action, then that vote would go to the select board. And under the current rules and regulations, the select board could either take no action or could act independently on their own. And the committee decided to send it to the department head versus the board of select board. Because the, the PCF that was presented was hiring this assistant at 19.66 an hour However, the PRF that had been presented and the job description that had been posted was for seventeen fifty four an hour. And therefore, there might have been many more applicants had they known that it was going to pay more than $2 an hour, more than what it was posted for. And so we asked for clarification and didn't, yeah, and we have not received any. What does the budget? The budget, hold? well, but that doesn't matter. No, I'm just saying, can it hold the 19 if that kind of gets passed? I guess is what I'm yes. that one of my questions. Okay. It, it can. It's the whole way it was done. Yeah, and no, the you fact should that do it that. You shouldn't hire someone for, there shouldn't be that. Dis no. It wasn't high, it wasn't posted in a range. It said, this is what the hourly rate will be. It wasn't like, you know, between 17 and 19, yeah. depending on experience yep. or something. Yep. It did not say that. So it's just not a good hiring no. practice to no. post something and then, not to say that this person isn't worth it or yeah. anything, but yeah. they didn't post it correctly. They didn't post it correctly. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. But I guess like my, my only question would be is, um, well, I guess the they're both starting later, as to say, your, the town account and expenses are already in the hole, which it's illegal to overspend. I want to say that again. <laughs> um, and so that has to come from some other line. And so if it comes from, I guess because the the both account and the assistant aren't starting later, there'll be a, there should be some money to cover that. But um, should be at least twenty five percent, assuming. Um, Worst case scenario, if the assistant gets hired at the higher rate, higher rate yeah. it would um, be three months that the job was vacant. Yeah. So that's, I was just kind of curious about that. But yeah, you can't, because like you said, how do you know people aren't going to, more people aren't going to apply? Different so really apply. they, I mean, I, and, and it was a struggle because, yeah. of course, we're not trying to hold the town back. And we know that that office needs to be staffed. And, but what's the right thing to do? I mean, really, they should repost it for the higher, for a range or the higher rate and see. I mean, but I'm sure that then if they do that, this person that they had already offered the job to is probably gonna say, see you later. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You know, like it's, it's right. the you other, can't. The other piece of that is back in December, the job was rescored. And two, three members of the board were there for rescoring. The vote was two to one. And the, the motion was in its fixed 1745 period. So the pushback, this was pushback on both sides here. The pushback on the select board side is you potentially exceeded your authority. You're to set a grade and a range. You're not to say it's to yeah. the penny, this is the dollar. Well, and the person that left that position was making way more than that. Yeah. So how is that? that yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't in the December meeting, but that's the argument on the other side as to, well, if PPP had just scored it and given the range, then that's what it would have gone through. I see. And that was December, flow we, all the way through to, to June to the new budget, and a new number comes in. See, we didn't discuss that at the well, meeting. No. <laughs> no, and so it was rescored as like an admin position because um, it. it because they seem to only be paying an admin rate, not necessarily an assistant rate, at the $17. Yeah, I, I do know that the clerk submitted the minutes, which is in the packet tomorrow night of that one. Uh -huh. And we did, and we, and it was discussed that night last week. Last week is with PPP, but we were, it, there was so much going on that I didn't pick up on that when, when it came across. And, I knew that it had been rescored, but I didn't real. I didn't go back and read the and fine details. Of right, that. right. Yeah. So it's a catch twenty two. Yeah, exactly. So which side's going to get? Because if the select board, which you know, I I I agreed with with, with Donna and, and Robin, and I believe uh, uh, Derek abstained, sent back to the department head for clarification. So tomorrow night I'm going to take the same stance. You know, where's the clarification? You want to put it before the board select, and then you should. You should uh, re-advertise it, but, it won't, but you can't re-advertise it until it comes back to the PPP board and they overrule their December vote. And so we got this vicious circle that just keeps rolling. And if there's any two groups that we need to get to the table together, it's those two groups. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, after, not, I, I just think some of, you know, I'm on the PPP. I think that by default, because you're a finance member. Yeah. <laughs> I think there are flaws in the design, I guess I would say. You know, but just trying to do the best we can with what we have and maintain the peace. Yeah. Um, how about the audit for twenty? So do you know anything um, about that? It was fine, the fine, you weren't copied on an email today. So the, the outside auditor sent an email. I saw, you know, I, I probably just assumed that the guys were. No, I didn't get anything. Um, give me one second. Sabrina and Chelsea to pull together a list of open items slash questions for the audit. See below. Uh, she asked if there's an update on the town accountant. But then she has 23 open items. Wow. So uh, they are IT questionnaire needs to be filled out, access by employees. Legal letter waiting on the response from uh, Michael Randoza. Michelle Randoza, which usually ha the Michelle Randoza from KP. That's where uh, you know Ed would send that to them, and they would get that response back. Uh, activity level control questionnaires, payroll cycle needed, all others. Um, 
Yeah, the questionnaires are. I mean, you know, you've got to totally misleading example of the financial package. Oh, he's still with us. So that he's just got to grab a package. Cash control risk support, receivable control risk, inquire involving receivable reconciliations, uh, coastal billing summary for 20 and 21, agent report for 20, special revenue, subsequent receipts. Yeah, the coastal so, billing, I think, I'm pretty sure they would send monthly reports to Jen. Yeah, and I would and do, I would book the commitment and book the receipts and balance there against mine. So it's uh, quite possible that no one told Jen that it was needed or something, maybe. But she's and she's copied on this one. Support okay. for the quarterly reconciliations with the school, police outside detail, capital projects, uh, inactive project status, enterprise fund budget versus actual trends, indirect cost, questionnaire and methodology, short term, long term debt, questionnaires. Net pension liability had a twenty seven percent decrease in covered payroll. Wondering why. Net pension liability for the census as of 910. Um, some items from the schools that they're waiting on. Fixed asset additions per the annual town meeting or special town meetings. And then they give the examples of what they're looking for. Hope that would be pension though. That would be. Which one? Oh. Pension liability decrease? The, the oh, because if you look at 21 budget, you know, you said the account yeah, sure. position isn't in there because, right, we're not paying. So in 22, the budget was, you know. Uh, but the town was still on the budget liability. It's $978,544, and we paid, I'm assuming this is retirement, right? Yeah. This is Hampshire County. Well, not, not well, I don't know. I guess I'm not pension sure. liability. I'm not sure what they're asking. Pension would be Hampshire County retirement. That's what not. sounded to me that there was a 27 percent decrease year over year. I don't think it was. No. Or did something that could come to the right line? Item? So this, we paid 16 and and 22 was paid 16,606 less. Which I don't know if the budget was just incorrect. I think what they did was they budgeted the full amount if you didn't prepay. Yes. And so that's where the savings that 10%. is. Yeah. Um, 880, 90, that's just strange. Which Jen usually of, has that told Jen usually has that amount of whatever I'm they just kind of surprised that it got put in like that, unless he was trying to build that in and because that's sixteen thousand that could have yeah. been used for something else. Yeah, and, and Jen, we always pay one payment every year. Yeah, and you got the payment before you kind of knew what it was before we did the budget. Yeah. Usually, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we right. get it in January. Yeah. The current budget has a hundred percent, and the discount's not in there. Right. Meaning they budgeted for the full. So there's Which, sixteen thousand left in that line. But well, maybe whoever. Yeah. Say Jen wanted to put the budget in. Yeah, well, that's not yeah. something Jen would come to me. But anyway. Um, a lot of those things seem like they were accountant because those are things that I used to do. So that's probably why they're not done is because no one knows quite where to find them or look for them or what the answers are. And so, I mean, some of those questionnaires, obviously Jen can help with the IT thing. That's got to go to Ed because he's in charge of all the IT stuff. Um, but the receivables, the payroll, Jen can probably, I don't think the processes has changed, Right. you know, so you would just have to, I mean, Tanya used to even sit down and go when they were here and go over a lot of the questionnaires yeah. with the, whoever was while she was here. But, you know, if, st if things are the same and then the, mm -hmm. you didn't yeah. really have to, didn't involve a lot of time really. No, and just change the no, names. No, probably and just going through and checking the box. You know, yeah. Do these things, they've got to have it in their spot. And, you know, it's, it's like anywhere else. You know, when the auditors come in, if you're ready for them, you're good. Yeah. If, if, you, if you have a list of items to get back to them and you don't do it in the next week or two, they're on, you know, they're on to the next municipality. Yep. And then when you finally give the answers, it's not like they're going to drop everything. You no, know, and you, you give them the answers and they have more questions on top of that Correct. of certain things and stuff. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Well, and I think when there's changes in personnel, you know, you, you develop a a rapport and an understanding and they know your work when you're when you've been there for a while.
and then when you when they have when it's a new person then they don't know you and don't know your work so they have to be extra diligent right. to make sure that mm -hmm. you know and when they would come in they would have a question they would sit and talk to you me or Jen or someone and say hey you know I found this this or this or you could explain it to them while they were looking at their work papers mm -hmm. and they're like oh okay that makes sense to me you know or whatever and yep. so that was that so yep. this one is tough because there's you know people aren't here to answer those questions so right. okay so we got those pieces um, anything else from the committee <laughs> Barbara's just listening it's a lot to learn, to learn, to learn. we're just glad to have you here okay. <laughs> <Poor Bobby. laughs> yeah but you know what the thing is is that if you're not sure, you can always ask the question, and it makes us go, oh, yeah, well, what about that? Or how can you do this better or do different or whatever? You know, it's always. Well, I always feel when I'm listening to stuff, the select board or us or mm -hmm. anybody else, when you use acronyms, nobody, the public basically probably doesn't know. Oh, yeah, that's mean. a good point. And I always think that at least it should be stated and then say, mm -hmm. blah, 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 P, for instance, PCF. Yeah. Personnel change form. Okay. Yeah. And you, so you say personal change, change form. form yeah. Will be, will be so the personnel change form is for when someone is getting a raise, they're changing a job, that type of thing. The personnel requisition form, which we approve for the police chief, is to hire a new person for a, an existing or a new position. So. Thank you. And the PPA? The PPP, PPP board. Personnel Policies and Procedure Board. Okay, so say that 10 times fast. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even say the acronym fast. <laughs> um, the okay. IT. Yeah. <laughs> what is IT? Um, technology. Technology. Information technology of the computers. Um, all that kind of stuff. So. And I think, as, as I said, if the public's listening and they're using all these acronyms, they don't really know quite what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, that's a good so. point. That is a good point. Even if I'm listening, <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> so do you guys have anything else? No? Do you? Thank you for you know coming and joining us and keeping us updated. and um, to... Are we done? Yep. Motion to adjourn? Hold a second. It is 8 o'clock. 8. That wasn't too bad. No. 7 to 8. All right. Fast. Stop the recording so we can. <laughs> Please.